India is a land of breathtaking diversity, home to over a billion people, thousands of languages, and an ancient history that stretches back tens of thousands of years. But where do the people of India truly come from? For decades, historians and archaeologists pieced together theories based on artifacts and ancient texts, but recent breakthroughs in genetics have added a whole new layer to the story, and it's more surprising than anyone expected. Genetic research is now revealing that India's origins are far more complex than a single migration or civilization. DNA evidence shows waves of ancient populations moving in and out of the subcontinent, blending over millennia to form the genetic tapestry of modern India. These discoveries challenge long-standing myths, reshape our understanding of ancient civilizations like the Harapans, and even shed light on the contentious Aryan migration theory. In this video, we'll break it all down, the first human migrations into India, the genetic legacy of the Indus Valley civilization, the impact of Central Asian steppe migrations, and how these ancient movements shaped everything from regional diversity to the caste system. Each revelation brings us closer to understanding not just India's past, but the broader human journey itself. So buckle up because we're about to embark on a 70,000-year voyage through the genes that shaped one of the world's oldest and most vibrant civilizations. Let's dive into the real story of India's genetic origins, told through the latest science and ancient DNA. The story of India's genetic origins begins with the first modern humans who migrated out of Africa around 70,000 years ago. These early humans traveled along coastal routes, eventually reaching South Asia, where they settled and thrived. Genetic evidence from ancient DNA shows that these early settlers formed the foundation of the South Asian gene pool. Their descendants still live in India today. These ancient populations adapted to diverse environments, from the lush forests of the south to the arid deserts of the northwest. Over thousands of years, they developed unique cultures, technologies, and ways of life. Genetic markers from these early hunter-gatherers can still be found in the genomes of many indigenous communities, especially in southern India and among tribal populations. But these first settlers weren't isolated. Over millennia, waves of migrations brought new groups into the region. One of the earliest significant genetic influxes came from ancient Iranian farmers around 9,000 years ago. These farmers intermingled with local hunter-gatherers, contributing to the development of agricultural communities and setting the stage for the rise of complex societies. Interestingly, researchers have found that people in different regions of India carry varying amounts of ancestry from these ancient groups. For example, southern Indian populations show stronger genetic continuity with the original hunter-gatherers, while northern populations reflect more genetic contributions from later migrations. This regional variation helps explain some of the incredible genetic diversity seen across the subcontinent today. The genetic legacy of these ancient migrations reveals that India's population history is one of constant movement and mixing. Far from being a static, isolated region, the Indian subcontinent was a crossroads where people from distant lands met, mingled, and created new, vibrant communities. Understanding these early migrations is crucial to unraveling the complex web of ancestry that makes up modern India, and it's just the beginning of the story. One of the most fascinating chapters in India's ancient past is the rise of the Harapan civilization, also known as the Indus Valley Civilization. Flourishing between 3300-1300 BCE, this sophisticated society built advanced cities like Mohenjo-daro and Harappa, complete with elaborate drainage systems, large public baths, and standardized weights and measures. But what do genetics tell us about the people who built these impressive urban centers? In 2019, a groundbreaking study analyzed ancient DNA from a skeleton found in Rakagari, one of the largest Harapan sites. The results revealed that the Harapans were a genetic mix of ancient Iranian farmers and indigenous South Asian hunter-gatherers. Interestingly, they showed little to no genetic influence from later Central Asian steppe populations, suggesting the Harapans developed independently of those later migrations. When the Harapan cities eventually declined, likely due to changing river patterns and climate shifts, their people didn't simply vanish. Genetic evidence shows that many Harapans migrated to other regions of India, blending with local populations and spreading their genetic legacy across the subcontinent. In fact, 
Traces of Harapan ancestry are still found in modern Indian populations, especially in Dravidian-speaking communities in southern India. This finding is monumental because it challenges outdated colonial-era theories that suggested Indian civilization only flourished due to outside influences. Instead, the Harapan civilization was a homegrown powerhouse, developing its culture, trade networks, and technologies through a complex interplay of indigenous innovation and ancient migrations. The Harapan genetic legacy lives on in more than just DNA. Elements of their culture, from craft techniques to symbolic motifs, can still be seen in some Indian traditions today. And as scientists continue to analyze ancient genomes, we may discover even more connections between the Indus Valley and the modern Indian population. This chapter of India's history reveals a powerful truth. The subcontinent's roots run extraordinarily deep, with a civilization that contributed not just to South Asia's genetic landscape, but to the broader tapestry of human history itself. Few topics in Indian history have sparked as much debate as the Aryan migration theory. For decades, historians, archaeologists, and political ideologies clashed over whether a group of Indo-European-speaking pastoralists migrated to India from the Central Asian steppes around 1500 BCE. Some argued this was a colonial construct, while others believed it explained linguistic and cultural shifts. But now, genetics is shedding new light on this age-old debate, and the results are fascinating. Ancient DNA research confirms that steppe pastoralists, closely related to the Yamnaya culture of Eastern Europe, did indeed migrate to India. Their genetic signatures appear in modern North Indian populations and are particularly strong in higher caste groups. But contrary to older Aryan invasion theories, this migration wasn't a violent conquest. Instead, it happened gradually, through multiple waves over centuries, with steppe migrants blending with local populations rather than replacing them. The genetic data aligns with linguistic patterns. The Indo-European languages spoken across much of North India today likely spread alongside these steppe migrations. But the genetic impact of these migrations varies. Northern populations carry more steppe ancestry, while southern populations have little to none, reflecting the limited geographic spread of these migrants. What's truly fascinating is how this genetic layer interacted with existing populations. By the time the steppe pastoralists arrived, the Indian subcontinent already had a deep genetic and cultural history shaped by ancient hunter-gatherers, Iranian farmers, and Harapan urbanites. The steppe ancestry added another layer to this complex mosaic, possibly influencing the formation of Vedic culture and early Hindu traditions. Crucially, genetics disproves the notion that the Indo-European migration erased earlier populations. Instead, it adds to the evidence that India's history is one of constant blending and fusion. Each migration, whether from Africa, Iran, or the Central Asian steppes, added to the genetic diversity that makes India so unique today. This discovery helps reconcile long-standing debates. Yes, there was a migration from the steppes, but it wasn't the singular defining event of Indian history. It was just one chapter in a much longer story, a story of people moving, mixing, and creating new cultures over tens of thousands of years. And understanding this complex past doesn't diminish India's rich heritage, it deepens it. One of the most striking aspects of India is its immense diversity. People from different states often look distinct, speak entirely different languages, and follow unique cultural traditions. But did you know this regional variation is reflected at the genetic level, too? In fact, genetic research has revealed that ancient migrations, combined with thousands of years of social practices, played a huge role in shaping the subcontinent's diversity. When scientists studied the genomes of people across India, they found that different populations carry varying amounts of ancestry from ancient hunter-gatherers, Iranian farmers, and Central Asian steppe migrants. Northern Indian groups tend to have more steppe-related DNA, while southern populations show stronger genetic continuity with the region's earliest inhabitants. This aligns with historical records, but genetics adds a whole new layer of evidence to explain why India is so regionally distinct. But what about caste? For centuries, the caste system structured Indian society into rigid social hierarchies, and genetics shows that this system may have roots in ancient population mixing. 
Studies have found that caste groups often have distinct genetic profiles, suggesting limited intermarriage between groups for thousands of years. Interestingly, higher caste groups tend to have more steppe ancestry, possibly reflecting the influence of migrating pastoralists who brought Indo-European languages to the region. However, genetics doesn't support the idea of pure, unmixed populations. Even within caste groups, people carry traces of all the ancient migrations that shaped India. This suggests that while social boundaries restricted gene flow, they didn't completely isolate populations. Instead, India's genetic landscape reflects both deep ancestral mixing and the impact of long-standing social structures. Another fascinating finding is the genetic similarity between some Indian populations and groups outside the subcontinent. For example, genetic links between Indians and populations in Southeast Asia and the Middle East suggest that ancient trade routes and cultural exchanges also contributed to India's genetic diversity. People weren't just arriving in India, they were also leaving, spreading Indian genes and culture to distant lands. Ultimately, genetics shows that India's diversity isn't just cultural, it's biological, too. The incredible variety of faces, languages, and traditions across the subcontinent is the result of thousands of years of migration, adaptation, and human connection. And far from dividing people, understanding this shared genetic history reveals something profound. Despite all the differences, every Indian carries traces of the same ancient ancestors who made their way to the subcontinent tens of thousands of years ago. This knowledge has the power to reshape how we think about identity, history, and belonging. India's diversity isn't a modern phenomenon. It's an ancient legacy written in the very DNA of its people. And the more we learn, the more we appreciate the beautifully complex story of how one of the world's oldest civilizations came to be. India's genetic story is as vast and intricate as the land itself. Every new discovery, every ancient genome analyzed, adds another piece to the puzzle of who the people of India really are. And the answer is as powerful as it is humbling. Indians are the descendants of countless migrations, ancient civilizations, and thousands of years of mixing, adaptation, and evolution. What makes this story so extraordinary is how it reframes our understanding of identity. The DNA of modern Indians carries the legacy of the first humans to walk out of Africa, the resilience of the hunter-gatherers who roamed the subcontinent. The ingenuity of early farmers from ancient Iran, the brilliance of the Harapans who built sprawling cities, and the cultural influence of steppe migrants who brought new languages and ideas. Far from being a single origin population, India is a living, breathing testament to the interconnectedness of human history. This genetic complexity mirrors India's cultural diversity. The fact that people from different regions carry distinct genetic traces of ancient migrations explains why India is such a mosaic of languages, traditions, and customs. But at the same time, these findings also reveal a shared ancestry, a reminder that beneath the surface differences, all Indians are bound by a common past. Perhaps the most powerful lesson from this research is what it teaches us about the nature of human civilization itself. India's history wasn't shaped by one group or another, it was shaped by everyone. Every migration, every blending of cultures and genes, added something new to the subcontinent story. And this relentless mixing and merging of peoples is what made India the uniquely rich and diverse place it is today. Science is still unraveling the full complexity of this history. As technology advances and more ancient DNA is uncovered, we'll likely learn even more surprising details about India's past. But one thing is already clear. India's genetic legacy is a story of unity and diversity, of countless threads weaving together to form a tapestry that stretches back tens of thousands of years. And this history isn't just something to be studied, it's something to be celebrated. Knowing that India's people are the product of so many ancient journeys, of so much human resilience and curiosity, is a powerful reminder of how interconnected we all are. It shows that migration and mixing aren't the exceptions in human history, they're the rule. So, the next time you look at a crowded street in Delhi, a bustling market in Chennai, or a festival in Varanasi, remember, every face you see carries within it the story of humanity's epic journey across continents and centuries. And that's not just India's history, it's a history that belongs to all of us. 
Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through India's genetic past. If you found this story as fascinating as we did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the science that's rewriting human history. Until next time, stay curious.